I'm Roger, and today we're going to talk about leveraging a, a tablet to control your home automation system. So if you're like me and you're really into home automation, one of the things you probably thought about was mounting a tablet on the wall to control things such as your lights or maybe even monitoring security cameras. I know when I first thought about it, I thought about buying you know, a, a normal sized iPad. The more I thought about it though, the more I realized that that size tablet really wasn't going to fit the needs of what I was trying to do. So I'm here to tell you, when you're trying to think about putting a tablet on the wall to control your home automation system, think big. So in the video today, I'm gonna to show you how I power the tablet, how I turn the tablet on and off so the screen's not always on, and give you an overview of my Lovelace dashboard and Home Assistant. Lastly, I'm gonna talk about some lessons learned I had during this entire project and what's next for my kitchen tablet. So the tablet itself is a 4K display um, an LED back end, um, and it runs about 1300 US dollars. Even though it does have the Android operating system running in it, as we'll see later in the video, it's really not the best option. So you're watch. probably thinking to yourself, Roger, that's not a tablet, that's a TV. And technically you're right. It's a touchscreen TV. It is running the Android operating system, so that's why I call it a tablet. Um, but you're not, you know, it doesn't have a battery in it. You have to plug it into the wall. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, I really wanted to show everybody how bad it works running uh, with um, the web browser on the built or Android operating system on the device. Sadly, when I loaded it up again, for some reason, the frigate card wasn't loading. So I can't actually show everybody how bad it works. But believe me though, when I initially tried it, basically all the video feeds wouldn't even pop up. There most likely wasn't enough memory on the device to actually get all those feeds up and working. And especially with a low end CPU on the device itself, it's just really not feasible to use. So now let's actually talk about how I'm powering the tablet and getting my Home Assistant dashboard up on the screen. So all that's powering the Home Assistant dashboard here on the tablet is a little mini PC that's actually just sitting behind the tablet there. It's actually just nudged in. Um, at the moment, but the airflow is going the correct way. So as I said earlier, this is really the only way you can publish this many video feeds on your tablet, running a Raspberry Pi or leveraging the built-in Android operating system on the tablet TV itself is really not gonna cut so it. Taking a look at the CPU and GPU usage on the mini PC, we're under a gig of memory for the web browser hosting all this. CPU usage is around 30% and our GPU usage is also around 35% um, usage. Overall, the responsiveness is very good and this computer is more than enough to handle the lovely dashboard with all the feeds. We go over to the Raspberry Pi though, we're seeing about 300% CPU usage, load average of nine, and the entire solution is really not responsive at all, especially the video feeds. Now I'm gonna switch over to my computer and give you all a better detailed view of the Lovelace dashboard here on Home Assistant. Okay, starting off, um, to get this really nice uh, layout I have here, I'm using the layout card. So this dashboard is set up into six columns, which all the different cards are set up into. Um, so this really allows me to place exactly where I want um, all the different cards, what, what columns, and it really just makes things a, a lot, lot easier. Um, so I'm not seeing any of the, the top panel and the side panel here on Home Assistant. I'm using the, the kiosk add-on, and that basically hides uh, the top and, and panels on the side so we can get um, the full screen real estate for our cards. So starting up here on the top, I have a, just a simple card widget. Um, Basically, uh, this the only thing modifications here. I actually modified some of the JavaScript to remove the AM PM. Um, I was in hopes I could make this a bit bigger and, and save some room, but it's sort of just wasted space here. Um, sort of obvious, you know, if it's AM or PM, you know, based on um, the, the light outside. Uh, underneath here, I have uh, just the, the weather forecast widget, nothing crazy. Here's when start, things start to get interesting. So I'm actually leveraging the button card to um, have titles on top of my groups of um, entities I'm displaying here. And if anybody's a fan of Star Trek, they would recognize this is the Elkars theme. So um, my own take on it, I got a, a custom font on here, which, which matches as closely as I could find to Elkars. And I thought that would just give us a, a nice, you know, um, nice cool look. Definitely have great, bigger plans in the future to make this a little bit more Star Trek-y, Elkars themed. But right now I just have the, the titles of the entities. 
So going down here for my temperature sensors, these are all mini graph cards. So um, you know, I have it displayed here, so it gives me a, a good high level overview of how the temperature changed in all the different rooms. Um, since I don't wanna put four uh, buttons um, on here, uh, this kitchen, which the tablet's actually in, is um, on its own row here and just made this uh, a bit bigger. Down here, this is Apex charts. So the cool thing about this is, this is actually showing how long the main AC in the house has been on per day. So I'm actually capturing this data into a local database on Home Assistant and then just graphing it. So it gives me a good overview of um, how much really, how much energy I'm using, you know, based on the temperature outside, how long the AC is on. So I get a, a good idea of how much the AC bill, um, the, the electricity bill is gonna be at the end of the month, you know, based on how long the AC is on. Also too, you know, if the AC has been on for uh, 20 hours, there's probably something going on uh, that, that doesn't really make sense. So here's when we start to get to the really cool, interesting thing. So all these um, cards here are actually using the Frigate card. So if you're not familiar with Frigate, it's an open source AI software that's been tightly integrated with Home Assistant. So this card is actually picking up the last person detected on every one of my security cameras. And the cool thing about this is that the card has built in functionality to automatically trigger an update of this card once a person's detected. It's literally just a switch box on the card, which is pretty cool. Um, what I have added that's unique is down here, I'm actually leveraging the button card and I'm taking the last changed value of a person detected for that camera and then showing it in a time interval. So there's some logic in there to, um, to show it in, in human readable time instead of just a timestamp, right? But this is pretty cool. Um, bad thing about this is it do, by default doesn't um, survive a, a restart of Home Assistant. So if you've recently restarted Home Assistant, they'll all say at the same time. But it's still really important, you know, just seeing a picture on there. Was it two days ago? Was it 30 seconds ago? Um, so it definitely helps. And we'll, we'll see a little demo of this later in the video. Um, I am doing this video uh, recorded on my desktop and not the actual um computer running on the tablet in my kitchen. So some of the spacing's a little off just due to the, the DPI scaling I have set here versus on the, the computer that this is actually running on. So that's why things will look a little bit off here. Um, here, I just have the lights um, all in the house. So using the button card, which is cool because I can actually see when the last time the light actually changed state. So um, yeah, good to know if the light's on or off, turn something on, but also too, at the same time, you actually see that state change. Same thing with the door. Um, it's nice to see that, that down there, see the last time any of those doors have been open. Going on next, I have a, a ring alarm integration on here. So uh, this you know, allows me to um, arm or disarm the, the alarm system. And this is a, a custom card here to trigger my uh, KEF LS50 wireless two speakers. So this is actually tied into Rune which is uh, a media software, so I can actually, I have limited uh, albums on here right now, uh, but I can actually go in here and see what um, uh, songs I have on the room system and play on there, which is pretty cool. Uh, next, we get to majority of the dashboard here. These are basically all the security cameras um, around the house. So these are also using the Frigate card but they're leveraging the GoRTC add-on. So what this integration does is it basically allows this RTSP feeds that come from the, the webcams to show up on our Lovelace dashboards with sub millisecond latency. So it's basically real time. Um, and overall, from a performance perspective, it works great. The only downside is that these the video feeds on these cards tends to freeze every day or so, which, which is very frustrating. So I set up a control by having another computer that's hardwired into the ethernet uh, versus the, um, the uh, touchscreen tablet I have in my kitchen. And same thing is happening at the exact, pretty much the exact same time. So I know it's not an issue of it being on Wi-Fi. It's basically the GoRTC add-on. It's not very good about if there's uh, any, any issue with the video feed and it basically just sort of um, freezes the, the video, anything being displayed. Now it's easily fixed by restarting the page, but also too, um, uh, you know, a little annoying and frustrating. 
But the cool thing is, since these are the using the frigate card, I can actually hover over here and actually see you know any last events that happen on that camera, all from the the, the touch screen, which is pretty cool. Down here, I have an activity feed. So I don't really honestly use this that much. I only have a few entities on here, but it's still pretty cool. Um, then I have a AC card here. This turns the main AC on the house on or off, um, or adjust the temperature. And these two cards down here are also using the button card. So these are basically allowing me to control the two mini splits I have in the house and I'll show the last time they were triggered here. Um, this right over here is automation. So automations I have um, using for frigate for basically person detection for my front yard, backyard, and this is for the garage door if it's open or, or closed. Um, these are basically, I can turn these automations off to get alerts. So if I'm doing work in the front or backyard, um, I can turn those alerts based on um, I don't want to be bothered. So now I'm going to demo out what it looks like when the security system on the tablet um, actually detects somebody. So you can see in the upper left part of the screen, exited out of my front door, walking through the front driveway. So as I'm walking through all the different cameras, you can see the, um, the picture elements with the frigate card on the left hand side of the live video feeds are auto updating in real time. And then using the button card underneath, I have the, the last time a person was detected on each of those cards. Now, for whatever reason, the card on the second row on the furthest left-hand side did not update. So I'm not really sure about that one, um, but all the other runs are working, even though the, uh, the time at the bottom um, got updated. So you can see it's a pretty cool system, you know, um, you can follow somebody as they walk around my property and all the images of the last person that appeared on the camera are automatically updated instantaneously. Um, so why you see it in a sort of a widescreen versus the actual crop shot, it takes Frigate a, a few seconds to actually do that crop. So that's why it looks a little bit different um, for a few seconds. And you can see at the back of the property, which is really dirty, um, but all the cameras um, and images for the last person detected have all been updated. The next issue came into how can I make sure this TV is not on all the time um, and you know have some power management features on that. And basically the first issue I came up with is um, once I plugged into the USB port to the mini PC to get touch functionality um, through the tablet, it basically put Windows into a state where it would never turn, um, never basically go into uh, a power saving mode, basically shut off the screen. Like, like So my initial fix for this was writing a PowerShell script that would actually disable um, the touch screen uh, USB um, device on the computer itself. Then it would actually go about restarting the computer. And then since there was no input, the computer would turn off the monitor itself. Then in the morning, <laughs> There was an, another PowerShell script to re-enable the touchscreen functionality, reboot the machine, and it would be on uh, for the course of the day. The more I thought about that, though, even while it worked, it really wasn't a, a you know, really great configuration. So there's definitely a lot of times during the day that nobody's in the kitchen, nobody's looking at the tablet, and you know, even though we're home, we definitely don't want that to screen beyond when, when nobody's in the, the general facility. So I had to think of something else. Something else to really provide the, the best configuration for having the screen not on all the time was leveraging what I use for my uh, security uh, system is Frigate AI. So if you're not familiar with Frigate AI, it's an open source um, software that basically does um, object detection for your uh, security cameras. So in my case, we're just doing human detection. And while normally the rest of the security cameras are recording full time, providing notifications um, for events. Um, basically right here, we're just um, doing a simple automation. So when it detects somebody, it's actually just gonna turn on the tablet remotely. So in the corner of the kitchen, I have a Wi-Fi camera hooked up to the Frigate AI system. And this is determining if anybody's entered the room and turns on the tablet. So I'm walking into the kitchen here in the bottom corner. You can actually see a feed from the Frigate AI system. Once I'm detected as a human, the Broadlink IR adapter will actually send a signal to the tablet on the wall, turning it on. Simple as that. So definitely some of the lessons learned I learned um, with doing this project is um, you really can't rely on the built-in Android tablet on any of these screens or even leverage a Raspberry Pi to, to power the device. 
um, you know, buying a, a little mini computer and installing Windows or Linux on it with a, a dedicated GPU in there is definitely going to go a lot further um, if you have um, plan on putting video feeds on there. As you saw from the video earlier, not only are we leveraging a lot of CPU, we're actually leveraging the GPU, which do, is doing the decoding on the video streams. So definitely really important to have a, a decent sized uh, machine um, you know, backing your system if you want to put video feeds on there. Um, another improvement I'm, I really want to work on is um, putting an Ethernet cable and basically um, wiring up this tablet uh, to my home network. Right now, I'm um, leveraging uh, Wi-Fi and I actually had to replace the Wi-Fi card on the mini PC just because it was a bit too slow if there was any spikes in some of the video feeds. So with the default one on there, it was averaging probably around 30 to 40 megabits a second, uh, doing an iPerf test um, back to my router. So pretty much as fast as it's gonna get. Um, there were some tweaks that I can make inside Windows to make it a little bit better, but it just didn't really cut it. So I ended up buying a, a Wi-Fi 6 card, um, putting it in the, the mini PC. I'm definitely getting around a, 150 to 200 megabits a second now, way more than I actually need for the tablet, but I've definitely noticed a difference. There's definitely not any, any latency issues right now with, with the video streams on, on the tablet. Also too, what I'm thinking about in the future is just really beautifying the tablet a lot more. If you see right now, um, the, the only cool thing I have on it that, that looks fairly interesting is I'm a big fan of Star Trek, so I tried to recreate some of that Elcar's look for the title of some of the cards. So going forward, I, I do plan on um, improving this a lot more and trying to make it a, a little bit more uh, you know, cool looking. Just wanna thank everybody for watching my video today. Hopefully everybody learned a few things about putting a large tablet on the wall, got some ideas for your own home projects. If you have any questions, feel free to post in the comments and I'll see everybody later.